Hey gang, I got an offer for you today from LinkedIn. As business-to-business marketers, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You will also be able to drive results with targeting and measuring with their tools built specifically for B2B. And best of all, they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads also rank number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything you can be and get $100 credit. It's $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. It's linkedin.com slash MPN. P-N. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. On today's show, we're talking to Dan Maybe of A Big Orange Heart, WordCamp of London, and his own agency, and his tool that he's built out for online events, mainly to solve a problem that Zoom couldn't solve. But Dan hails from the London area, and he is nice enough to take some time off his evening to talk to me. It is a great chat, and we talk about WordFest. And if you listen to the very end, you can find out when the next WordFest is next year. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. I have Dan Maybe of Big Orange Heart, of WordFest Live, of his own agency. Dan, tell us a little about, about your origin story. How did you find your way to everything, <laughs> literally where you are now? <laughs> uh, well, that, that's a that's a great question. There's There's... Kind of a lot of stuff going on um, pre my kind of where I am now. Um, Mm -hmm. My I've always kind of had that kind of entrepreneurial feel, that desire. I've always, you know, always wanted to build out new projects. You know, jump into new projects, build them out, uh, evolve them, develop them. I've gone through multiple patterns where I've started businesses, got them to a point where I've enjoyed them, and then I've sold them on. Um, they've ranged from carpentry to owning pubs to running after school clubs for primary school children, right through to today where we are now, where, as you mentioned, I've got my own that focuses on software development. As you also mentioned, we've got Big Orange Heart, which is a, a nonprofit focused on supporting and promoting positive well-being and mental health within remote working communities. How do you sleep? <laughs> I do. And it's something that I now strongly encourage others to do as well i've certainly gone through phases in my life where i haven't and that has only ever negatively impacted me if i am being that. brutally honest yeah it's not that whole saying of you'll sleep when you're dead oh uh, well, you'll be dead faster if you don't sleep so exactly. <laughs> yeah absolutely exactly so tell us a little bit about like let's start off like what, what so you you have an agency which i think most people know you and they know big orange heart and the word fest you know we're you know the word camp meetup mm-hmm. london i can't get the, the right mm-hmm. words yep. out for that but you know tell us a little bit about your agency what what, what like how did you find your way into that uh so that was actually pretty much my kind of origin story into working with wordpress and um, to be honest it's, it's actually out of everything that i do it's been the longest running that i do it's the thing that pays the bills for me essentially that is something that was as it kind of ebbed and waned as as the years have gone on um, through this space. I've in recent, in recent times I've spent much much more time focused on uh, the nonprofit and you know building that out. So there's been a lot more energy, effort, time that has gone into Big Orange Heart of late uh, over my um, over my agency. But it tickles along. Make sure that the bills are paid. It, it's something that keeps it keeps me 
where I need to be here in my life. It's something that I've, I'm, I've been asking a lot of kind of questions of myself recently uh, about uh, what I'm doing, where I'm going, what does the business look like going forward. I think there's been an awful lot of change happened over, you know, obviously setting aside um, the very obvious or looking at uh, the pandemic and all the, the changes that were forced upon us there. But equally, I think within specifically within the WordPress space, we're seeing a lot of change happening as well. And it's been you know, quite a long period of time of change you know, from, you know, from the Gutenberg editor right through to the things that we're going through now. And it just means I'm, I'm constantly reevaluating. Do I need to evolve the business? Do I need to adapt what it's doing? We were kind of more traditional web design and development services and more heading towards the uh, kind of product software development side of things. And that's where I'm, I feel a stronger passion at the moment. All of the, the products all you know, built off of the technologies uh, that we are used to and use uh, on a daily basis within the WordPress ecosystem. Yeah, for WordFast, you built that whole platform, didn't you? Yes. I mean, most people are like, oh, we'll just use Hopin or we'll just use Zoom or like that. No, Dan's like, I don't have enough to do. <laughs> Let's build a platform that we'll eventually open source and let everyone mm -hmm. else play with. Yeah. But like, and this platform is incredible. It's not like, ah, we'll put this here. I'll oh, try it. No, it's like full featured. I mean, I've been in Hopin and I was impressed by Hopin. This is better. And I'm not just saying because you're a friend. I'm saying this is like, it's incredible. I mean, I'm speechless pretty much. It's like, it works, number one. There's like, like I think this first WordFest, I think there's a few hiccups. Second one, there was like no hiccups. And I was helping out with stuff. And I was like, the thing works. That's right. Even Hopin breaks down mid-conference. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that. It's uh, It's been a really interesting journey actually going through that. And yeah, we certainly looked at all the various off the shelf solutions that there were. And I'm right back at the kind of the very early days of the pandemic's backstory. We were delivered the WordPress London meetup. So a, a physical event for many, many years, obviously pandemic hit, we couldn't come together. So within, I think we, so we stopped, we said on the uh, February that we were not going to come together for March. So this was pre the government actually locking us down. But we were just, wow. we just see what was going on. Very responsible know, of you. We're just gonna, yeah, you know, we're gonna be, you know, take some, you know, be cautious in relation to this. So you know, quickly, how do we get, how do we get next month's event? So March's event online. How do we manage that? Uh, we jumped into Zoom. Realized it's entirely the wrong tool. Uh, it's a, oh, you know, it's a great tool for, um, you know, one to few communication. You know, if, if it's a um, small discussion no good whatsoever for for any kind of scale events you know you can't have 30 40 50 60 people sitting there because you just can't you don't get the opportunity to connect with one another so we did the march event in zoom and set about immediately after that looking for an alternative solution and then there, there were some uh, options available to us hop in i believe was one of the ones mm -hmm. at the time um, but they just didn't fit our needs. There was issues across each of them. And really, to be honest, we're open source. You know, we want to be working. With, we are passionate about open source. Mm -hmm. So let's look at options in the open source. So within the first 12 months, we've had just shy of 20,000 people registered and attend through that platform, which um, wow. has evolved month on month on month as we've as we've delivered more events and it's become a bit of a running joke for regular attendees around what what has changed this month what's different what's what improvements I mean, it's kind of fun though if you think about it if you're like you've seen dan build it in real time you're like whoa i can have an emoji here oh wow like that's cool like it, it's fun to, it's even fun when zoom does new stuff like you can play poker in zoom now it's like <laughs> i don't know how it's a business app but then anyhow so you so you have your, your you have your agency and then you need another project looking at a hole in the head. So you do um, a big orange heart, which I think is a fantastic organization for remote workers and mental health, which I think is a very big thing in, in the whole entrepreneurial space because there's this whole overarching thought of you guys got to hit the grind, grindstones, work to, no, to, your, to, to the bone. And it's like the wrong mentality. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of su successful entrepreneurs that haven't worked to the bone, and it's been great. So tell us a little bit about Big Orange Heart. Sure. It really was born out of a, it was kind of a passion project for me. It was something that I, I was struggling with my mental health. It's something that I've, I've been open about over the years in relation to this. And, um, it, for me, it was about the isolation, you know, spending a lot of time as a solo business owner, spend a lot of time in my own head, you know, just thinking through things, you know, not having, you know, a, not having a business partner and B not having somebody you know physically located next to me or around me or near me that I could just you know, bounce ideas back and forth of, 
it was something that I really, you know, I was having issues with and I wanted people to be able to communicate with and connect with in a safe environment that wasn't, um, you know, I didn't want to feel like I was exposing myself or overexposing myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so set about and it, it rapidly evolved into what is today is Big Orange Heart. And, you know, I think I came, I, I came, I was based in London in my last employed role. And um, I was in an office environment where I had colleagues around me and you could bounce ideas back and forth. And even if I wasn't bouncing ideas back and forth, I had other people in the room that I may talk to. And that as I'm talking, even if I'm not consciously talking about something that's on my mind, I'm still verbalizing ideas. I'm still verbalizing things that are happening. And it allows me to to process those things. Whereas sitting mm. in, you know, in, I'm very fortunate. I've got a home office. Sitting in the home office on my own, there's no no conversation happening. There's no conversation taking place that's allowing that brain and my brain to to process the thoughts and ideas. It's such a great it's such a great organization, and you know, great logo too. I may I may add, it's you know, it's a simple orange heart, and I think that it's actually kind of taken off. I've seen orange hearts everywhere now that people are realizing it's kind of mental health. That's kind of the way to be. And I like that, you know, it started off, wasn't it WP and up originally? It was all it was. kind of WordPress focused and then you bran- branched out. Wasn't it the beginning of this year or 2020? So it was the beginning of 20, um, forgetting my years now. <laughs> oh, it happens. <laughs> uh, so right at the start of the lockdown. Um, yes, it was we, in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had always intended to evolve um, at WP and Up. So WP and Up was um, really kind of making sure we wanted to make sure that we could deliver something into the community that had value and had worth. Um, but we appreciated that the issues that we were tackling and the, 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 the stories that we were hearing and the conversations that we were having with others didn't specifically relate to WordPress and didn't specifically mm. relate to that environment. It was it was more about the the wider remote working community and you know we'd always figured you know this was going to evolve this was going to grow into more um we just chose <laughs> that time right at the start of the pandemic to go through a complete rebrand and also why not right yeah, exactly yes <laughs> like, there's not enough going on um and it was you know it was a very challenging period very and and yeah as, as for so many through through obviously uh, this pandemic's been very you know very very tough times from a from a financial perspective and from you know many perspectives at the beginning we were seeing a 300 percent increase in demand on the services for the organization and yet we'd seen more than a 90 percent drop off in donations uh, from you know oh. to, to keep them funded now we and always have done fully supported that we need to be individually we need to be fiscally responsible we need to make sure that we you know, aren't putting ourselves in um, you know, difficult situations. So there was, you know, there was never any kind of you know, issue with the fact that we knew donations were going to drop off. We always expected that through a period like this. Yeah. But of course, you've got to figure out how to replenish that and how do you, you know, fill that gap in some way? And that's really where the uh, WordFest was born, essentially. This one was amazing because it's it's not just like your normal word camp. Where it's like six hours, yeah. Like, let's go. For, let's throw that out the window. Let's go for. Let's go for twenty four hours. Let's mm-hmm. hit like the four major time areas. Talk about ambitious. And Absolutely. I saw that, and I was like, I caught. I think every year I catch. Well, every year it's been like we've had two in the scene. And on top of that, you guys decided to do two like what four months apart from each other. They're actually six months apart, but yes, there was there was oh, yeah, still it's- two two in the same year. And yeah, this this issue of twenty four hours really for us it was it was everything that we try to do across Big Orange Heart is about inclusivity. It's about you know making sure that as many people as possible can be you know can participate and can can partake and can access everything that we're doing. Um, so this idea of how do we deliver an event into our community that doesn't exclude is is really mm-hmm. quite challenging and. We tried. The, we went back and forth with various different ideas. Do we do a multi-day event? Do we do? Do we do? I don't know. Let's say North and South America on one day. Do we do you know, mm-hmm. Europe on another? And the consensus was that we just twenty-four hours, one twenty-four hour period. It gives you know everybody the opportunity to potentially partake through that twenty-four hour period. The, the challenge is whether, you know, do people join during their working day? Do they join during their off time? There's all sorts of, you know, benefits to then offer mm-hmm. it across a 24-hour period. And 
yeah, it, it definitely presents itself a, a whole set of other challenges. Um, you know, we were joking about you know, time zones and how do we you know, communicating across multiple time zones, trying to run a, a you know twenty four hour event with seventy plus volunteers. Uh, you know, over that twenty four hour time period, the team behind it. I mean, I just, I mean, all behind you know, the volunteers, yourself being one of those. Thank you very much that step up and enable us to be able to deliver WordFest live into the community. It's just spectacular. It's in, <laughs> there's not a word for what it really is. And the fact that it isn't a dumpster fire in the process is incredible. Like it's just like holy macaroni. I mean, I've seen word I've seen word camps go south fat, you know, and they're like six hours. Mm-hmm. And this one, I mean, I, I I've been in privy to the back end of stuff and saying, like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But after all that, it still goes off with relatively smoothly. I mean, mm-hmm. there's yeah, every once in a while there's a little bit of a well, the audio is a little off or man, did our host just fall asleep? <laughs> like, you know, or like, like stuff like that. But you know, that's understandable for the most part. I mean, and it's it's just a, it's a it's a great thing. But are, are are we planning on doing two next year too? We are. We are. We've oh, not yeah, we've yeah. not officially <laughs> announced it yet. Uh, oh. However, it is out there. March fourth, twenty twenty two, will be the next WordFest live. So, uh, looking forward to uh, looking forward to that. We are we're about to get start getting some information out in relation to that. That's um, so yeah, excited to get that back into the community again. I think I think what it for me it's the um, we're doing something that is ultimately trying to benefit the community and you know being completely open also raise funds for the charity to enable us to be able to deliver the services that we provide but we can't you know, we're not in a situation to be able to pay people to do that oh, yeah so the yeah. whole thing's run by volunteers and trying to create a team and, and encourage people to take on responsibility and that you know that there's there's a lot that goes on into delivering wordfest live oh it does yeah. and you know just trying to if if we're if we're running our businesses mm-hmm we, you know, we've got team members. We need to encourage team members. We need to, you know, f- you know, foster their care, look after, them, make sure that they, you know, they're they're a, a part of, you know, an active contributing part of the team. You're making sure mm-hmm. they're healthy, making sure that everything's working, you know, running nice and smoothly. But at the end of the day, you can then turn around and say, right, and here's a paycheck in return for that. Whereas with something like WordFest, that you you can't necessarily offer anything in return other yeah, than what's well, the return is the is the actual event going off without a hitch. And then, going, and then also the, the reward is going to bed at the end of it <laughs> yes. and sleeping really soundly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. It's but that, that trying to build the, the team and the team morale and, you know, a, a situation where people want to partake in something is so key in this. And I think we've, we've come up, you, you mentioned that you've seen work camps go south. And unfortunately I've, I've I also have seen it and, I take my hat off to every single person that volunteers any kind of time in any way, shape or form. But I think there's, there is an element of we've made our lives a little bit more challenging in the, particularly in the work camp ecosystem where we're kind of saying, we've got to figure out this new thing. We've got to figure out how we do it and mm-hmm. off we go and do it. And you're trying to find these online venues. And I think there's just some real challenges that we're we're kind of coming up against that, and you know, don't get me wrong, there have also been some spectacular oh events God, as well. Absolutely brilliant. Some of them are you think they're going to be small and rinky dink, and they come out and they're like, "Wow, that was really good." Like you think, like like you know, there was one in Northeast Ohio last year. Was like Northeast Ohio. Like I mean, from from America, it's like Ohio is a lot of farmland and they have some great cities, but it's like Northeast Ohio. It is it is Cleveland, granted. Mm-hmm. But I, I, it was, I was like, I'm kind of partial because we have one of the bigger ones for, you know, work camp Philly, where I'm from. Mm-hmm. And like, that's a big one. And Northeast Ohio was like, incredible. And then they had work camp Kent, mm-hmm. which I think was around yeah. Kent State, you know, and it just was like, last year was like the year of the word camps. And then there's WordFest on top of it. It was like, mm-hmm. I mean, I got so much WordPress fun out of last year. It was incredible. I was like, <laughs> woo I think that actually I think got you through mentally too, which is really good. Absolutely, and I think that that's a real key here, a key um, positive through all of this is the fact that you know, we're able to jump around globally and access all of these events. Um, you know, our real only limitation is our time to be able to you know, to participate. Mm-hmm. So, so. I remember watching it 
the second one was during the summer. I remember I was watching it while I was waiting to pick my kid up from camp. Mm -hmm. You guys are all talking about, oh, it's late at night. And I'm like, mm, it's three o'clock here. <laughs> <laughs> but Dan, this is great. So where can people find you? They can find you. Is it a big orange heart or is it big orange heart org? Uh, so uh, the website is big orange heart dot org. On Twitter, it is at a big orange heart. Uh, you can have the A or without the A, you know, either way. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and where else can uh, we find more about Dan maybe here? Pretty much anywhere forward slash Dan maybe, M A B Y, um, any of the social networks. I'm actually don't bother contacting me on Facebook anymore because I'm just not active across Facebook. Oh, um, but yeah, Twitter is probably the best place uh, if you want if you wanted to connect with me on social. Um, LinkedIn equally another another good place to connect if you're if you're looking to. And how would they sign up for like, get into the Slack for Big Orange Art? So if you are wanting to know more about Big Orange Heart, um, if you're wanting to connect with the community, uh, head over to bigorangeheart.org forward slash join. Um, there's an option there to join the community. Um, you can choose to either either make a donation or not through that period. Entirely up to you whether you want to. Uh, through that process, you'll get a Slack invite to come and join us. Uh, we've got a, an active community um, where we encourage people to talk, to be honest. Um, we we're not encouraging people to be overly open in terms of if you need to access mental health support, professional mental health support, then our team will guide you. Um, but yeah, it's an opportunity. If you are a business owner and you are in one of these situations where you're just constantly kind of going around in your head, you know, how do I deal with this? You know, I've got this client that I'm invoicing and they're not paying or, you know, all those kinds of conversations. It's, like board. it's like that water cooler that you need. Exactly. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I love it. And so, Dan, thank you for being on, and we'll see everyone next time. Seth, appreciate that. Take care. Anytime. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast directory of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Tanya Daka hosts a great podcast called The Copy Arena. Tanya, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. What they're going to get is down-to-earth copy advice that helps them get their readers to open and take action. Amazing. Where can people subscribe? They can subscribe at tanyadaka.com and anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. Or on marketingpodcasts.net. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.